Well, hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, and this is the weekly devotion for November 8th, 2021. First thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you to all of you who helped out with the turkey supper this last weekend. We know we broke records, we just don't know final numbers yet, but uh, again, we had an army of people here, army throughout the week that prepared uh, and made it all possible, and so we really want to say a deep-hearted thank you to you this morning. But as we look ahead, I also want to say uh, good Monday to you and blessed day to uh, week to all our veterans and to say thank you to you. Uh, this Thursday is our is Veterans Day. This coming Sunday is Veterans Sunday, which we will celebrate our veterans. But we want to say thank you to our veterans and thank you to the families who stood behind them, supported them, prayed for them, and for far too many, mourned them. Uh, we thank you for your sacrifices and for your faithfulness. And so in the spirit of Veterans Day today, I'm going to look at Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 13, where Jesus is talking about the end times and, um, and to be on our guard. Interesting word, right? Guard. <clears throat> so let me read it. It says, Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginnings of birth pains. You must be on your guard, he says. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what you will say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. So we ask the question, what are we really fighting for? And what is Jesus talking about here? Well, the world is against us. We're on the battlefield, whether we see that or not, it's true. Ephesians 6 tells us that <clears throat> we are to be soldiers in a spiritual battle, to put on the full armor of God. We also hear from 1 Timothy 6.12, which calls us, fight the good fight, take hold of eternal life. You see, when things unravel, and eventually they will, you really got to come down to the most important thing. What is it you are really going to fight for? What is it that matters? In Mark chapter 13, 1 through 3, Jesus tells the disciples that the temple and Jerusalem are utterly going to be destroyed, not one stone left on another. The temple and all of its grandeur, its golden walls glistening in the sun, the seat of power and authority to the Jewish nation would be in ruin, by the way, for a second time by the Romans. The spiritual state of Jerusalem brought about the downfall, however, as it seems to be unfolding today before our very eyes. Jesus' statement left Peter reflective and concerned, maybe even in some level of denial. But a terrible sense of instability and fear seems to have washed over the disciples at this point. Uh, I would say this is probably the feeling many of us had at 9-11, the sense of vulnerability all of a sudden. And I can imagine this was similar with Peter as Jesus was speaking in Mark 13. Jesus says, watch out for false messiahs. Why is that? Because history has proven that many times that false messiahs use crises as a means of assuming power over others. In times of famine, they promise food and deliver only enough for starvation, if anything. In times of plague, they promise healing, but they keep, keep the best resources for themselves. And when ambitions of war come knocking, they promise peace, but only accomplish appeasement, surrender, and in some cases, people being carried off into slavery. False messiahs promise prosperity and safety when there is none. As Israel was collapsing and, and dying under its own spiritual uh, evil, many prophets came along and said, oh no, everything's fine. They were false prophets. 
Jesus warns his disciples and us, do not be deceived by them. You see, the world that Jesus describes is hateful and despicable and full of unrest, a great cause of distress. Um, but the one who stands firm to the end, Jesus says, will be saved. Not only saved, but Daniel 12, 13 says, will shine like the stars forever and ever. You see, our job isn't saving temples. That's not what we're fi fighting for. We're not saving the nation of Israel or our government, the American way of life. That's not what we're fighting for, not as Christians. We are not fighting for those things, but the things that lead to righteousness, the, the righteous things that God has given us in Jesus. We are like any soldier. We're fighting for the one next to us, next to you, for our families, for our children, for our congregation members, for our brothers and sisters, for for all of those things until we get a home alive. All about getting home alive, isn't it? So consider some ideas that allow us to fight against this world effectively. They're very basic things. For instance, being a man or a woman of the word, of your word, as someone who could be counted on, means you are a person of truth. You are a person like Christ. To act generously, stand up for your friend when a bully threatens, to stand in harm's way when you know your children or your family may be threatened, or just sitting at the same table as a lonely person who just needs a little company. Anything to express the love of Christ has the same power as one of the miracles that Jesus performed. And this is what Jesus tells us. And when we do such things, we are fighting for the kingdom and for those who would have it. We also fight for our families. We seek to teach our children, of course, and love our spouses. That often means the most basic thing is just simple time together. Nothing builds a foundation of faith, my friends, like being together in church. Yes, uh, yes, it means to love one another. That's another big deal. But love is never independent. It's never by itself isolated. It's always filled with many things. Loyalty, obedience to the word, affirmation, intimacy, helping others, helping one another, forgiveness, faithfulness. Uh, the example we give is, by the way, the example that's caught by our children and then passed on to our grandchildren. And so we want that to count. That's a very important way in which we, we fight for the kingdom of, of God, where we fight the good fight. We know what Jesus fought for, that's for sure. Jesus came like a land invasion on the beaches of Normandy into enemy territory to retake what sin had stolen. He made himself nothing, vulnerable to temptation, but without sin. He came for one purpose, to win our salvation on the cross and in the resurrection. The cool part, the next time we see Jesus, he will come like a conquering hero to claim his people. He will come with all power and unmistakable majesty. He will exact judgment and uh, multitudes that sleep in the dust will be raised uh, and made awake, some to eternal life and then others to the shame and everlasting contempt. At one point, Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's the promise of Philippians 2. It will be a defining moment, terrifying to our enemies, who, by the way, will have no strength and, and any ability to avoid their outcomes. They will be completely powerless before the triumphant Lord. And the promise is that we will find, uh, we who stand firm to the end, We'll, we'll be with him. We'll be right there in the victory. We fight the good fight of faith because Jesus has already won the war. We have a reason to fight, knowing that we're going to, we're going to win. Now, folks, the signs are all around us, if we're honest with ourselves. Things we never saw, thought were going to happen to us in this country are happening, and they are accelerating. So it's important that we ask the question, what do you fight for? Your home, your rights, your comforts, your children, your spouse, your faith. Perhaps the best answer is Joshua 24, 15. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are in. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord.
So may the Lord bless us with the courage that our veterans have expressed in their time and service. Allow us to have the courage of the martyrs who've gone before us, those who had fought for the faith, died in the faith, and have now experienced eternal life. May we be blessed with that kind of courage and bravery to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for being with us today. I thank you for joining me uh, this week again. And I want to say happy Veterans Day again to all of our friends. Thank you out there. Um, and uh, we appreciate what you have done for us. And we thank your families as well once again. Until next time, we'll see you next week. The Lord bless you all. Take care and bye-bye.